Yeah, that uh, deal I, I mentioned uh, in first session, uh, I was given further information on it, uh, on Alexander the Great on Netflix. It's uh, at least a five-part series, if not more. And they're about 40-some minutes a, a, a session. Uh, and it's uh, real good. It's not, it's not like, you know, maybe back in the day you saw a movie and it featured Napoleon. Okay, it's not that way. It's, it has actors and actresses, but the, then they stop and deal with historical stuff. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, we're, we're going to wrap this up. With some, this, this might be a real short session. Okay. We are, we are on the last page here of your notes, page 15. And it's something that I have taught repeatedly. And that is the fact that See, if, you, if a person doesn't have this information as a Christian, they're just, you're, you're just knocked all around with stuff. You've got to know what God's doing. And that he has evicted Israel. This, this goes back to Moses under the cycles of discipline, the fifth cycle being the worst, eviction from the promised land. You can't behave yourself in the land of promise. You're going to get kicked out. Now, if you decide out there you're going to get your act together, I'll bring you back. We have one instance of that, and that is the nation that was in place when Jesus showed up on the scene. When they came out of Babylon, when they were 70 years uh, in the penalty box. And, they got, and, and <clears throat> that group, the southern kingdom at the time, came back. The northern kingdom, the, the so-called ten lost tribes, they're not lost. God knows where they're at. Uh, was I reading about some Jews uh, being persecuted in Pakistan? And that they felt like the only safe place for us is Israel. You know, because you can't, you can't know that unless you were one of them and were in a, a, a place where this anti-Semitism is, is rampant, is, is ramped up at work, at school, wherever. That's God's way of, 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 get, of, get, of getting them back. But like I was saying, if you don't have, if you're not anchored in this, you, you, you just, you're just flipping around. And I, I kind of get that impression with some of these uh, fundamentalists that are real supportive, uh, moral support for Israel. They just want peace. <laughs> That's off of the page now. There's going to be no peace until the second advent. And then Israel will have peace for forever. True Israel is a, is, is a racial and a, is, is, is a redeemed and a racial Jew. Being a half Jew, so to speak, isn't going to cut it. Salvation is not by race. There's no, there's no favored race in that sense. They perish just as quick as, as a Gentile unbeliever and need the, need the, same, need the same thing as uh, salvation. So again, if you don't understand, this wasn't an accident that the Jews got kicked out of the land the last time by the Romans. And since all those centuries have gone by up to the 20th century, apart from some visitors, there's no, there's no serious return. The Bible said the land would not be beautified, made productive. By whoever came in there, they were, they were, they were fully capable of it, whether it was the Ottoman Turks or whoever. They did not make the land blossom and produce crop. It was depressing. It's the same language that's used of the earth when it got judged after the fall of Satan, tohu wa bohu, without form, nothing attractive. Yeah, other nations ran up and down it, but then nobody settled in it and cleaned it up. It had to be Jews. 
So that's a sign. You can just check it out for yourself. They had all these centuries, Gentiles, to go in there and uh, uh, build up the agricultural base and whatever other things that are, that are there. But they, they didn't because God didn't allow, allow it to happen. He said in his word, it's a sign. When you're out, the land lies desolate. There's that. Then there's the, the, the prophecies that said, I'm going to scatter you to the four winds all over the earth. And then I'm going to bring you back. Not because you got your act together out there like the, ba like the Babylonian Jews that came back uh, after the 70-year captivity. No, I'm not, I'm not bringing you back because there's any righteousness in you. And you've turned to, turned to the Lord and threw off all of this. They got you out there in the first place, like rejection of your Messiah. That's at the top of the list of all the bad things they've done. But I'm going to return you because I'm sick and tired of the talk of the nations running their mouths. Oh, that's the promised land, blah, blah, blah. And all these people that are, you know, of Zionism and, and calling for the elimination of conservatives, calling for the elimination of Israel. Because they're stupid and they're stupid because they're willing to be they do not take the Bible seriously so God restores Israel and under the vision of the valley of the dry bones by Ezekiel it's a skeleton and all the bones are scattered over this valley and then the bones start coming together and when bones hit bones they make a noise and that's the early if you will push on the part of certain Jews like Herzl to get back to the land. Things don't always go so well <clears throat> when we're out here among these nations. It they can get along for a while and then boom. Whether they bring it on themselves or whether it's just Gentile and taking it, it doesn't matter. It's what it is. And I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to put you in the land. I'm going to reestablish you from all the places I scattered you. On a, uh, and so that's what we've been seeing. More to come. More Jews to come home, if you will. <clears throat> and so we, we have our, our, our people. Oh, I think there ought to be two states. The Palestinians don't want two states. Their ideology does not want two nations living side by side and behaving themselves. They don't want that. Do you know what Islam is? It's a religion that says, for all the infidels, when we get a chance, we'll kill you. Now, you may run into a Muslim person who doesn't, I don't, I don't get that from them, but it's their ideology. They want every Jew on the face of the earth dead. They want all that land. And their motto is from the river to the sea. They're referring to the Jordan. God's given the land, the, 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 the ultimate land grant, which they've never occupied for various reasons. It's from the river to the sea. The Euphrates. <laughs> the Euphrates from the river to the sea. That's going to, they're, they're going to get their full land grant. The, the most they ever held was during the time of the reigns of, 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 of David and Solomon. And then things shrunk a little bit, and on we go. Because they're acting up. They're playing the whore with the gods of the nations. That's what they're doing. That got them kicked out two times. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, 130 years later. This last time, it's even worse. They've got this religious facade praying in the land, but they rejected, they rejected their Messiah, their true Messiah. And they continue to do this in spite of the kind of scriptures we've been reading. Read Isaiah 53. You're a Jew. You're reading this. Who do you think this is referring to? 
It's referring to an individual that you shouldn't have repudiated. So Jesus comes on the scene, under, it's under the radar. He's just born in a little village. Uh, to a peasant woman. But she had royal blood. She, her line goes back to David. She was an, her ancestry. She's mentioned in the gene, uh, genealogies, which are pre predominant, predominantly have nothing in them but males. One male to the next, all the way down the line. Boom, 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 boom. The Matthew genealogy starts with Abraham, goes up, but the Luke one goes all the way back to Adam. You know that Luke was the only Gentile writer of Scripture, don't you? The historian, physician, Dr. Luke, Paul's personal physician, the writer of Luke Acts, and there's some, I'm not going to get into it, there's some that think he wrote Hebrews because of the language similarities and the, and the, and the, and the structure of things uh, between Hebrews and his other his, his, the book of Acts. Okay. I'm not supposed to get into speculation, am I? Okay. Anyway. Uh, God's getting Alexander back in the, keeps him, keeps it up there in front of people. I love it. That was my original breakthrough. That's the only one I can claim 100% credit for. I didn't get, nobody gave me a pamphlet. No one said, even said anything. I just, one day, I wasn't even in the book of Revelation. I was somewhere else. And I went there from my office was across the way there where the library is now. I just went in there and said, I'm just going to read this and let it say what it's trying to say. And that's Revelation chapter 17. He's one of the five. The the, the scarlet-colored beast that this woman is riding with, with, seven he, with seven heads. On the seventh head is ten horns. This is all symbolism. And those and, and, and five have fallen. I'm, 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 put yourself in the Apostle John, John's position, 96 AD. Five have fallen. One is Roman Empire, and one is yet to come. He's one of the five. Process of elimination. He's not an Egyptian. He's not going to be an Assyrian. You know? yeah, uh, uh, <clears throat> He's not going to be an Egyptian, an Assyrian, a Babylonian, uh, a Medo-Persian. Greece, number five. Greece is number five. See, that, that, and so I, I started looking at this and, and I realized that he was the most famous man uh, among Gentiles, among people, generally speaking, of the ancient world. What he did in his conquests was, was unprecedented. There's been military leaders and great ones and all. It was unprecedented. And he started when he was 20 years old. I kept saying 33. He died when he was 32 under mysterious conditions in Babylon when he had to come home but didn't want to because there's more worlds to conquer. But his men, we're not going any further. We want to go back to Greece. <laughs> he took the easy route coming back, didn't he? No. He was always this, let's, let's, let's go across this 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 desert when they could have went through a completely different thing. He just, he just had this thing about doing these feats. I think when he comes back, I, 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 I do a lot of thinking about that uh, because I can. I, uh, I'm thinking when he comes back and they find his remains, he'll know who he is. There won't be a question about it. And whatever he says goes. And he isn't going to plug himself in to the EU and to the YEF and any of this other stuff. He's going to do his own thing. And because people know who he is and the raptures occurred and everybody's all <laughs> cranked, they're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to jump on his bandwagon right and left. 
And he isn't going to have respect for anybody because they got money or they're a part of the new world order or whatever they want to call themselves. It's a whole new ball game now. And being under the influence of Satan, he isn't, he isn't going to be screaming, let's kill Jews. Is he? He's going to be their protector because Satan wants to put his AI in that temple that's yet to be built. You read about Revelation 13. This thing that is so unbelievably lifelike, but it's, it's artificial intelligence. It doesn't have a soul. I don't think he's going to go along with a lot of stuff. Plus, he'll tell a lot of truth. You'll tell a lot of truth about what happened back in the past where you historians got it wrong. You'll set the record straight. He has any reason to lie about that. If you're going to sell yourself to people who can't be all lies, you know, and I think he's going to be a flat earther all the way. I'm betting he is because I got, I got Psalm 2. They know that Christ is up there on the throne. He isn't running around, say, like an atheist or somebody saying, there is no Jesus, there is no heaven, there's no blah, 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 blah. No. The people of the Tower of Babel didn't say, there's no heaven and God above sitting on a throne. That's why they were building that stupid tower. And they sure as hell wouldn't be building on a spinning ball. What kind of, what kind of nonsense does that make? <laughs> they were smarter than we are in that department. We just got stupid because we didn't want God in our lives. And we, want, we, don't, we, don't want, we don't want to take the Bible seriously. Seven days of creation? Oh, restoration? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's our God. He can create a He can create a whole plant kingdom. Boom. He creates out of nothing. He's all knowing, all powerful. He's got He's everywhere at once. So anything He wants to do, He can do. Otherwise, His plan would be all messed up. Because He's known from eternity past every human being that would ever live, and those who would believe, and those who wouldn't. He doesn't learn anything or have to unlearn something. All right, let's wrap this up. In point 22, the mention of a new people of God in the wake of Israel's apostasy is found in Hosea 2, 23b, and I will say, and I, and I will say to those who are not my people, you are my people, and they will say, you are my God. 23, God did not reveal the specifics with respect to the new dispensation and those that would be his chosen people. Nor did he reveal the other details about the dispensation, that this is the dispensation where every believer is royalty and every believer is a priest. No, no, no priesthood just made up of these like in the Israel, the Levites. And, they, and it was just the males. Now, every believer is a believer priest. Everybody has is royalty. <clears throat> but in verse 26, Paul says, this secret aspect is now manifested. 25, the Scriptures of the Prophets refers to the anticipation of a new people based on Israel's spiritual fall. They knew Israel would fall. They knew they would be temporarily set aside as the custodians of the plan of God. Now they're just, now they're just, you know, they're not the custodians of the plan of God. How can you be? You don't even have the gospel right. You're just going through the motions until, until that changes over there. Yes, there is Messianic Jews, but they are few and far between. There's, I even read there's Messianic pastors with some of these Jews up in the northern, up in the northern area, and they're really concerned about Hezbollah and the bombing. A bunch of Jewish homes have been, been hit 
and all the rest of it. Oh, there's another scripture. We hear about Damascus in the news. I've been told that it is the longest inhabited, continuous city on earth. They didn't, they'd never had a period where they, they, nobody was there and then they had to rebuild it. Isaiah 17, Damascus will be a ruin. If they shoot a rocket and they start shooting those into Haifa, that big port city up on the north up there, it's close to, and we, we drove as far as we could, heading north, and then we had to turn around. There was a Jewish outpost marking the northern border going into Lebanon. Haifa, Haifa's, you know, down, and there's a big port down below it. Well, <clears throat> if they shoot, if they, if they start doing this, the Jews are gonna bring some weapons in there that you haven't seen yet. And in that valley of the vision of the dry bones, what's the last thing the bones get? Well, it's not the last thing. The last thing is, it's like a, a corpse that's scattered and then we'll add in all the parts, bones, flesh, organs, then skin. What's the skin? Every time you see this Jewish military out there with all of its sophistication, whether it's Air Force, infantry, whatever, that's the skin. That's the skin. That, the skin is the largest organ that protects the body. And Israel started off with a meager military deal and got attacked the minute they declared statehood back in 48. <clears throat> and then those wars since then. In 73, September, when they were celebrating their most sacred day, uh, the Day of Atonement, they were attacked on two sides, Syria and Egypt. It was, they, were, they were in a bad way, but they prevailed. They will prevail. Of course, there was a war with Jordan. That's just next door to them. When they, when they finally, for the first time in 1967, they gained control, full control over Jerusalem. And now they're the bad guys, aren't they? Because they're going in there and taking this Hamas thing down. What do they want to do? Just pull out and say, okay. And then you build it right back up. Because these Hamas leaders says, we're never going to stop. And this is, just, this is just the beginning. It may come down to it that the Jews will wipe the entire Gaza population off the face of the earth, or God will. Because there's no innocent Gazans. They're all trained from a youth to hate and to do everything you can to destroy Jews. It's in their textbooks. They don't even have a, Jew, a, a picture of Israel as a, uh, on their, on their, on their uh, maps. I have it called Palestine and boo-boo. So... Uh, those uh, squatters, as I call them, I don't, when, I don't care how they got there, when they got there, they're squatters. And God talks about dividing up my land. And our president ought to come up, we need a two states. You're so divorced from the Bible and God's plan, it isn't even funny. So the Old Testament scriptures were not silent. 27, Ephesians 5, 3 asserts the fact that which in other generations was not made known to the sons of man as it, was as it has now been revealed the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 28, the phrase according to the commandment of the eternal God means that this full revelation of the mystery and its timing was based on divine sovereignty. 29, this way of salvation and an implication Paul asserts has been made known to all the nations leading to the obedience of faith. When a person believes in Christ, they're obeying a commandment. The biggest one they'll ever obey in terms of what it, where it puts them or what it delivers them from. And 
as I told you over and over again, how much faith does it take? How much faith? Well, for some things, it takes a lot of faith. Certain tests and situations. But how much more is uh, no faith and some faith? Just that much. This has this has transpired has transpired by worldwide evangelism and the establishment of the New Testament canon of Scripture. Thirty one. The final verse designates God as the only wise God, as He is the formulator and fulfiller of the plan from eternity past. And it is through his son, Jesus Christ, that all this has been made possible. 30, to, be, to God be the glory forever is where all the credit is due, and he will in the end shine and receive all the glory. Even all unbelievers are going to bow before Jesus Christ, not because they're forced to their knees by some force, at the great white throne judgment, every knee will bow. They will, the worst, most God-hating, antagonistic types, they're going to they're gonna bow. But it's too late. They should have done that in time. So if you're out there, believe in Christ and get that straight. If you want to go further and you'd be smart if you would, under that high ground of, of, of being crowned qualified. And all these other things... Even legitimate things need to take second place. This is not my first objective. To get this, get that, and all the rest of it. And, and quit feeling sorry for yourself and sulking. It's not good for you. Read scripture. Look what you've got. Thank God for it. Thank God for the little things. I, I do, I try to. I might be struggling or something going, or, I, or something just falls in place. Thank you. Thank you. I don't take credit. I give him the credit. Amen indicates full concurrence. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us, and thank you that we could go through this great book. In Christ's name.